Hi, my name is Aniara Matthews. I'm the research services librarian for the Douglas and Henry Academic Centers. And today, January 16th, is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and Mercy University Libraries is proud to celebrate Dr. King's legacy of equality and freedom for all. And today, I am joined here with Reverend Dr. Thomas Slater, um, who is Professor Emeritus <laughs> um, at Mercy University's McAfee School of Theology. Thank you for joining me today, um, Dr. Slater. Thank you for having me, Annie Era. Yeah, and my first question is, why is MLK Day so important to you? Uh, yes, now before I answer that question, I wanna uh, say just a wee bit. Uh, today I'm wearing uh, the university tie of the University of London and the University of London colors, maroon and blue, in honor of my former student, Dr. Anthony Neal. Dr. Neal is a specialist in Howard Thurman, and he's doing his sabbatical now at the University of London, my alma mater. And I'm just very proud of him, and I want to give him a shout out. He works at uh, the University of Mississippi. The importance of King Day. I believe that Dr. King is a representative figure for so many African Americans, those known and unknown, who have not been honored in our history. And I think uh, the establishment of King Day was well overdue. Um, King uh, represent those folks in the African American community like Douglas and, and Tubman and Carver and Hughes and, and Carl Rowan and Jackie Robinson, the Tuskegee Airmen and folks who aren't as well known but who've been significant contributors like a Percy Julian who was a scientist um, he represents them, and it reminds American society that great, com great contributions have been made by African Americans from the very earliest days of, African Amer of American history. Um, my next question is, um, two of Dr. King's most well-known speeches are I, are I Have a Dream and I've Been to the Mountaintop. Uh, what is your favorite speech or sermon by Dr. King? Uh, I Have a Dream is by far my favorite speech or, uh, speech or sermon of his. It is powerful. It is moving. Uh, he hits all the right notes. It's not just that the content is phenomenal, but the way he presented it on the occasion he presented it. All of it was just phenomenal. It was great. It was awesome. He did what I, I like to say, he, he touched facts and feelings and brought them together in a very powerful way. But um, I have some others that aren't quite as well known. Antidotes for Fear, which is based upon uh, 1 John 4 and 18, is one of my favorite sermons by Dr. King. Uh, it is a powerful sermon that talks about the importance of courage, love and faith in overcoming fear. Uh, another one is a tough mind and a tender heart, where it says how people need to be both strong and compassionate as, as we deal with one another. And uh, another is the death of evil upon the seashore. In this sermon, he, he, he relates the Exodus story and the struggle for freedom by African Americans. It's, it's really a very, very powerful message. And, and I go back to it again and again. Uh, Antidotes for Fear, A Tough Mind and a Tender Heart, and the Death of Evil Upon the Seashore can all be found in his book, Strength to Love. Those all sound so great. <laughs> so my next question is, what are some speeches or sermons from Dr. King that you think that students, faculty, and staff here at Mercer should like read about or look up if they to get a better understanding of who Dr. King was? Well, as, as, as well as the four that I've just mentioned uh, in response to your, your um, previous question, I think we should also add letter from a Birmingham jail. Uh, this, this, uh, the letter from a Birmingham jail 
is a response to prolonged injustice. On the one hand, King's opponents want him to wait. But on the other hand, King is saying, uh, we can't wait because the longer we wait, the more injustice we'll have a whole of our lives. So we need to uh, make some changes now. And he challenges them on their own grounds as, as um, theological thinkers. It's uh, biblical. It's got a very strong argument. It has clear analysis of the context and uh, answers rooted in scripture. And, 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 and once again, he joins facts and feelings in, in his language. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful work. So what are some speeches or sermons by Dr. King that aren't as like well known that people should consider? Um, one of the speeches that isn't well known is um, The World House. It's um, a chapter in Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community. Uh, it is uh, prophetic uh, and, and uh, it is prophetic in the sense that most regular people think of something being prophecy, being able to look into the future and see something. And it's prophetic in the sense that um, we in the Religious Studies Academy think of prophetic in that it looks at a current situation and says, uh, this is ethically wrong and it needs to change. Um, what he does in the, in the World House is that he argues that the freedom movement in the United States will become a model for freedom movements around the world. Now he's writing this in the 60s. In the late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, a theologian from the former Eastern German bloc, from, from East Germany, what was formerly East Germany, came and did a sabbatical at Emory University. And he gave an address at Emory and he literally said, that when they marched in order to bring down the Berlin Wall, in order to uh, reunite Germany, East and West, their model was the civil rights movement in the United States. He literally said that. When we look at uh, how uh, Ferdinand Marcus's government fell, we see that it was a, a model of what went on in the United States. When Poland broke away, they, there were uh, protests in the streets that were emulating the civil rights movement in the 60s under King. When Iran broke away from the Shah and kicked him out, they marched up and down the streets in peaceful demonstrations, despite what they did at the American embassy, holding hostages for over uh, a year. Uh, they marched in the streets, emulating the civil rights movement here in the United States. And even today, as we live and breathe uh, any era, there's another civil uprising in Iran. And today they're not trying to kick the Shah of Iran out. It's the Islamic revolution. And once again, they're marching in the streets and civil disobedience to the dictates of, the, of their government. So uh, King was absolutely right. The civil rights movement of the 1960s has served as a model around the world. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So according to an article published in the Washington Post, um, Dr. King's speeches and sermons, the, his family has the rights to them. And I think currently Steven Spielberg has the film rights to some of his work as well. Um, and this kind of makes it difficult to obtain Dr. King's speeches and sermons. Do you think that his work should be freely accessible to the public? Um, I haven't had any problem getting the, the materials that I needed for my work. So 
maybe they're looking for something that I'm not looking for. Uh, I've taught extensively at the University of Georgia and at uh, Mercer courses in African-American interpretation of scripture. And every time I have, I've used King's work. Um, also, um, I have reservations about trying to tell the King family how to how to uh, continue King's legacy. It's not that I wouldn't give them advice from time to time, but I, but but uh, um, it is Dr. King is a member of their family, and they have the right to uh, protect that legacy as as they see fit. Now. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're perfect in this regard, uh, but I'm saying that that is their, that is their father, brother, uncle, uh, cousin. And we should not forget that as important as Dr. King was, he was more important to the members of his family. Mm -hmm. Um, so my last question is, um, what are some resources that you recommend for people to learn more about Dr. King? Um, and the library, we have access to Canopy, which is a, a video streaming platform. Um, and one of them that I do recommend is um, King in the Wilderness, which chronicles the last three years of his life. Um, but like, what are some other resources like books or films that you find helpful for students? Um, now. Now that you speak, I remember there was a, a, a film on King that was made in the 70s, and I can't remember who the actor was. That was very good. Um, but for youth, I would say there are a couple of resources for young people. Brad Mesker has written a book I am MLK Jr. And I'd say that would be very good for um, adolescents. Bonnie Bader has written a book, Who Was MLK Jr.? I'd say that would also be very good for adolescents. And that's part of the New York Times uh, bestseller series. Uh, so that's, that's a good endorsement there. Um, for people who want to get a little bit deeper, I would recommend William Watley's Roots of Resistance, the Nonviolent Ethics of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Watley is the pastor of St. Matthew AME in Atlanta. Um, that book is a little, uh, it's been out there a while. More recently, Lewis Baldwin has published Never to Leave Us Alone, The Prayer Life of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, this will help us understand something of his devotional life. The, the, um, one of the things I learned when I was uh, on internship as a pastoral intern is that it's very, very important to maintain a devotional life, prayer, scripture reading um, are extremely important. And I found it a great source for doing my work. And I wasn't under near the, the pressure that Dr. King was under. Uh, Baldwin's book gives us a, some insight into how his devotional life uh, gave him strength in his ministry. I hope that helps. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, that was my last question. Um, thank you so much for this interview. Um, and if you would like to learn more about the library or need more information, please visit libraries.mercy.edu. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I had a good time. Thanks for asking me. <laughs>